Voilà. Donc, Capfishman, c'est uh, Conserving Atlantic Biodiversity by Supporting Innovative Small Scale Fishery Co-Management. Donc, uh, là, c'est le, le, le premier uh, webinaire qu'on organise, uh, donc, avec les acteurs français. On organise la même chose, donc, avec les autres acteurs. Il uh, faut savoir quand même aussi que c'est uh, cette forme de, de présentation a été un peu uh, est liée, en fait, à la crise du Covid, où on avait prévu d'autres choses, mais on a dû s'adapter à, à la crise du Covid. Je ne reviendrai pas sur l'agenda du coup de ce premier séminaire en ligne, simplement vous dire que là, donc, on est dans la, la partie, euh, le projet Cap Fishman en bref, que je vais présenter, et ensuite on enchaînera avec les deux présentations euh, principales. Donc, qu'est-ce que c'est Cap Fishman Cap Fishman, c'est un projet international euh, qui opère sur l'arc atlantique, donc depuis euh, l'Irlande jusqu'à jusqu'au Portugal, du coup. Euh, il a, c'est un projet de quatre ans qui a débuté en mai 2019. Il est financé par le programme Interreg Espace Atlantique. Euh, le, 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 le premier objectif du projet, c'est vraiment d'améliorer la connaissance des petites pêches côtières en Europe, dans l'arc atlantique. Et donc, on espère que ça permettra d'améliorer les processus de décision les concernant. Euh, il s'inscrit globalement dans un objectif euh, du, du programme opérationnel de l'Interreg, hein, Improving the Protection of Biodiversity and Enhancing Ecosystem Service. Et globalement, il s'inscrit dans l'objectif d'améliorer euh, la protection des ressources et de l'environnement marin dans, dans l'arc atlantique, en, à, à travers un soutien au secteur des petites pêches côtières et en développant des outils pour aller vers une approche et un management écosystémique du secteur. On espère que ça pourra aider à, à aller vers euh, un management écosystémique du secteur et euh, aussi on, on cherche à soutenir le secteur. Pourquoi Capichman En fait, Capichman, on a besoin de beaucoup de données, on a des besoins de données qui, qui, qui soient très, 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 très détaillées, euh, des connaissances approfondies et détaillées sur les petites pêches côtières. Et donc, c'est euh, un, un des objectifs du projet, c'est d'améliorer la connaissance des, de, de ces petites pêches côtières, parce qu'on sait qu'aujourd'hui, encore, les, les données qu'on peut avoir sur ces petites pêches côtières, elles restent limitées, ou, voire insuffisantes, pour aller vers une approche écosystémique. On espère, du coup, avoir des échanges, donc ça, ça fait partie de, de, de ce qui se passe aujourd'hui avec les acteurs du, du secteur pour euh, améliorer notre connaissance de, 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 des petites pêches. Et, pour, euh, et on essaye de développer aussi une approche par modèle en utilisant la plupart des données qu'on qu peut avoir pour essayer d'améliorer la, la connaissance de, de ces petites pêches. Et ainsi, bah, de, par, par la suite, améliorer les, les, les processus de décision les, les concernant. Comment s'est structuré le, le projet Capichman Donc, On s'est structuré en consortium. On est, euh, il y a un large panel d'organisations qui, qui participent à ce, protégé, à ce projet, puisqu'il y a 28 organisations qui participent à ce projet. Côté français, c'est l'IFREMER qui participe, avec un soutien de la société euh, WIMEC pour la partie cartographie. Et en fait, tous les pays de l'arc atlantique sont représentés, donc le Portugal, l'Espagne, la France, l'Irlande et euh, le Royaume-Uni. On s'est structuré euh, un peu comme habituellement autour de d'actions spécifiques à réaliser par, par thème, par work package, comme on dit non, quand on parle des, euh, des projets européens. Et donc, euh, l'idée, c'est quand même de considérer les, les petites pêches côtières dans leur globalité, mais sachant qu'après, on, on a des, des focus sur des cas spécifiques euh, par pays. Donc, les objectifs, je pense que je les ai déjà un petit peu présentés. Donc, c'est vraiment de la connaissance des petites pêches côtières, améliorer leur connaissance avoir un soutien à ce secteur et pouvoir aller vers un management adapté pour un développement durable du secteur. Euh, on a aborde les, les thématiques environnementales, économiques, on aborde aussi les, les, les thématiques socio-culturelles, donc ça c'est quand même quelque chose qui est très intéressant je trouve. Et on, on, on essaie d'avoir des outils adaptés euh, au meilleur management de, de ces petites euh, sélections. On, on essaie d'avoir des, des premiers résultats là-dessus. Euh, L'idée c'est d'avoir une meilleure coopération alors, entre tous les acteurs de c'est pour ça qu'on va prendre les acteurs sur l'ensemble de l'arc atlantique. C'est améliorer la connaissance des petites pêches côtières, c'est progresser vers une approche de, de management écosystémique. On, on essaye aussi d'améliorer la connaissance spatiale de l'activité des petites pêches côtières. On évalue donc leur impact, donc ça c'est des choses qui vont vous être présentées. La valeur socio-culturelle, j'en ai déjà parlé, les estimations économiques aussi, de la valeur socio-économique des petites pêches côtières. Je vais vous présenter un peu plus en détail rapidement les, les différents thèmes qu'on on essaie de développer dans le cadre de ce projet. La, le premier thème, c'est d'améliorer la connaissance spatiale de l'activité des petites pêches côtières. Donc, euh, ça, ça c'est un des work packages dans lequel euh, on est 
très impliqué au côté IFREMER. Euh, L'idée, c'est d'avoir une analyse comparative des, des, des différentes méthodologies qui existent au niveau européen et d'évaluer la qualité des données d'activité disponibles dans les ARC, essayer d'harmoniser ces, ces données-là pour avoir des données euh, assurées ensemble de l'arc atlantique. Donc, c'est un des objectifs de ce, de, de ce thème-là. Et euh, tout ça, après, pour avoir des cartographies. Et on verra que ces cartographies des données d'activité de pêche, on essaye de, après de les mettre en, en relation avec euh, les autres outils qui sont développés par Capfishman. Le deuxième outil qui est développé par Capfishman, donc ça, ça va vous être présenté tout à l'heure par euh, Paolo, euh, mon collègue portugais, euh, c'est sur l'évaluation des impacts de l'activité sur les habitats et les écosystèmes marins côtiers de la région atlantique. Donc là, on est, la, la première étape, c'est de définir une méthodologie. Donc c'est ça que va présenter euh, Paolo juste après. Et donc, le développement, il y a, il y a une, un développement d'une matrice multicritère de l'évaluation des impacts. Et à partir de ça, l'idée, c'est d'évaluer les impacts biologiques, écologiques, physiques, sur la pêche, de l'activité des petites pêches côtières. Et de les cartographier toujours, pour après pouvoir les mettre en, en lien avec les cartographies de, des activités de pêche des, des, petites, des petites pêches côtières. Le, deuxième, le, le troisième outil qui est développé, donc c'est quelque chose dont j'ai déjà un peu discuté tout à l'heure. C'était par rapport au patrimoine naturel et à l'héritage socio-culturel des, des petites pêches côtières de l'arc atlantique. Donc, l'idée, c'est de faire un inventaire de, de, de ce patrimoine. Euh, David, euh, notre collègue espagnol, va pouvoir présenter ça tout à l'heure. Euh, D'évaluer leur valeur non marchande, la valeur économique non marchande de ces, ces, ce patrimoine-là. Et puis, d'essayer de, d'évaluer l'impact sur l'économie des, des zones de, de pêche côtière que peut avoir ce patrimoine naturel. Le septième thème qu'on aborde, il aborde plutôt les données socio-économiques. Et l'idée aussi de ce, ce thème-là, c'est de, eh de mettre en relation l'ensemble des, euh, des éléments qu'on qu qu peut estimer euh, via l'ensemble des autres work packages et de, de, pour essayer de, de progresser vers une approche écosystémique des, des petites pêches côtières. Donc, il y a aussi l'estimation de l'empreinte carbone, la valeur socio-économique. Euh, les valeurs économiques des services écosystémiques euh, et, euh, et également toute une harmonisation des, des, des évaluations socio, des valeurs, de la valeur socio-économique des petites pêches côtières. Tout ça, ça fait partie de ce, ce thème-là. Et c'est pareil, ce thème-là, il sera présenté par la collègue espagnole Aranza euh, aujourd'hui. Du coup, ça fait partie des, des, des thèmes qui seront abordés euh, par la suite. Et il faut savoir aussi que c'est euh, Aranza qui euh, coordonne globalement le, le projet Capricorne. Et le dernier outil qu'on qu développe, nous vous en verrez euh, ben, les prémices dans la, dans, la, dans la présentation sur le, le, le thème précédent. Euh, C'est quelque chose donc, le, où l'IFREMER est impliqué avec la, le soutien de la société WIMEC. Euh, L'idée, c'est de développer une base de données de l'ensemble des données et des outputs qui, qui viendraient de, de l'ensemble des autres work packages. De, sur cette base, de développer des outils cartographiques euh, qui permettent sur une même plateforme de, ben de, 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 de voir un peu les, tous les outputs de, des, différents, euh, des différents thèmes, de pouvoir les mettre en relation, et donc ça permettrait d un, d un, un appui à la décision. Sachant que l'idée, c'est aussi de développer des, un peu plus marginalement, et une fois qu'on aura développé tout, tout ce outil-là, c'est de développer des, un, un module qui va permettre aux gens de travailler ensemble. Et on a aussi l'idée de, de développer un, un outil euh, plus simplifié à des fins pédagogiques qui permettrait de présenter les grands, les grands outputs de, des différents thèmes et de, les, grands, les grands résultats pour un peu permettre de les mettre en valeur. Donc je vais arrêter là donc la, la présentation du, du projet Capuchman en bref. Il y a à peu près les 10 minutes qu'on avait prévu là-dessus. N'hésitez pas, si vous avez des questions, des, des, des remarques, euh, à utiliser l'interface QR. Vous pouvez déposer vos questions là-dessus. Et puis, et puis on, y, on, on les réabordera tout à l'heure à 11h. On va, je laisse la, la parole du coup à Paolo. Euh, qui est donc de l'IPMA, de l'Institut portugais sur euh, l'atmosphère et, euh, et la mer, qui va présenter, euh, estimer l'impact de l'activité des petites pêches côtières sur les habitats et les écosystèmes dans l'arc atlantique. Oh, 
bon. Bonjour à tout le monde. Euh, en première place, je veux m'excuser pour ne faire pas ma présentation en français, mais je crois et j'espère qu'avec les diapositives qui sont traduites par notre collègue français, euh, le message va, va, passer, va passer bien et d'une façon acceptable. Next slide, please. So uh, the, this uh, this first talk that that uh, I'm going to make is a joint uh, a joint work from the Portuguese colleagues working both at IPMA and University of the Algarve, and um, it relates with work package five. That's why the, the this talk is uh, titled uh, "Assessing the Impact of Small Scale Fisheries Throughout the Atlantic Area." Regarding the main objectives of this work pa package five, um, they are basically uh, the, to define a common methodology to assess the impact of small scale fishery uh, uh, throughout uh, coastal, marine and coastal ecosystems in, along the Atlantic. Uh, then uh, we wish also to estimate the impact of small scale fishery for different types of fishing gear and for different types of habitat. And finally, based on the, on the information gathered in this uh, previous objective, we also aim to propose eventual mitigation measures for those impacts that were identified throughout the Next slide, please. So, the first package five on the evaluation or assessment of the fishing impact is to divide to three different actions. The first action, action one, uh, is the development of a joint method, uh, which is basically an index system, which is basically an index system to, to assess the impact of small scale fisheries in the Atlantic, which, uh, which is followed by action two. Uh, that aims to assess the, the main types of habitats uh, potentially impacted by small scale fish, uh, fisheries, uh, fishing years. And finally, to eventually develop a potential mitigation measures to minimize those eco ecological impacts. Next slide, please. Uh, this this work package five is uh, subdivided into different specific tasks. First, we have uh, used the the database called EU Fleet Register to define the main uh, small scale fishing segment uh, in each country that participates in this um, this project. For this specific task. The, the partners were uh, UK, uh, Ireland, Spain, Spain and, and Portugal. But obviously, this can be replicated uh, in any other country, such as obviously France, uh, because the, the methods and the tools are common throughout the, the European Union uh, member states. So, after defining the, the, the main uh, segment of the fleet, the next step was to identify the main types of fishing gear used by the fleet in its, in its country. Then, uh, and this is uh, the stage that we are right now, we have been developing a joint method uh, with more clearly a multi criteria evaluation metric aiming to assess the main impact caused by each type of fishing gear in the, in the habitat and ecosystem. Then, after that, uh, we will ask the, the main stakeholders related with uh, with small scale fisheries, namely representatives from the fishing industry, researchers, managers, uh, non governmental organizations, to, to provide us their ex, uh, expert judgment and help us to score based on their uh, on their experience to score the impact of the fishing gear and rank those. Fishing years in terms of the, the expe main expected uh, impact scores in the, in the ecosystem. Finally, uh, the last task uh, in, in this work package will be to identify and map the habitats potentially impacted by the activity of small scale fisheries 
And in this particular case, we, we are uh, focusing on uh, outspar habitat, habitat from the directors, and also marine protected areas. Next slide, please. So I will go just briefly to some examples of the pre of the, the baseline work that we've made uh, both uh, for the UK fleet and the, for, for the Portuguese fleet. And uh, in, in the UK, um, uh, in order to, to assess the to assess and classify, and classify what, what is meant by small scale fisheries, uh, we have used both the classical definition uh, used in the European Union. Union that is uh, vessels below 12 meters in length overall, and also the, the, the local definition for uh, vessels below 10 uh, meters in length overall. So regarding the, the Atlantic uh, area, the, the project Atlantic area, um, in the UK uh, are operating over 3,000 uh, small scale fishing vessels following the, the definition of the European Union. But when considering only vessels below 10 meters length, um, there are around almost 2,900 uh, fishing vessels, which corresponds to more or less 80% of the, of the total fleet. Of course, the, this information, this national information can, can be subdivided uh, regionally, which is quite important. If you want to to check the differences between the different regions within each country, uh, we can see the, through the table that independently of, of the of the area, the small scale fishing sector is always quite important in the UK, ranging from around 60 to virtually 100 percent of the of the uh, national fishing fleet. Next, please. When, when uh, after defining the, those those uh, small scale fishing segments, we want to uh, have a notion of the main fishing gear used by those three, uh, because the, we, these were the main types of fishing gear that we will focus afterwards when we wish to assess their impact. Uh, in the case of UK. We can see that uh, pots and traps are the main, uh, are, are, are the most important uh, here used by, by the by the small scale fishing sector, followed by end lines and pole lines. Uh, the most important information from this table is that uh, despite having a huge variety, a huge, uh, a variety type of fishing gears operating uh, by the small scale fisheries. Um, the five most used types of fishing gear correspond to 88%, 89% of the fleet, and the 10 most important fishing gear correspond to uh, uh, more, more than 95% of the fleet. Next, please. Just to provide you a brief illustration that uh, we really have a huge variation between countries and between regions within each country. Uh, now, in the case of the Portuguese fleet, we have also used the classical definition of vessels below 12 meters length, and also the national, the, the local definition of small scale fishing fleet, which is vessels below 9 meters uh, in length. As you can see in the table, uh, we have over uh, 6,000 boats uh, over uh, below uh, 12 meters in length. And uh, almost the, the same number for vessels below nine meters in length. And the, our our the Portuguese small scale uh, fishing fleet corresponds to uh, around ninety percent of the overall national fishing fleet. Next, please. I won't go into excessive detail, but obviously we can we can divide. This national information into regions and have a broader uh, mission of the different realities between uh, not two regions in each country. Next, please. Regarding the 10 most important uh, fishing here using in Portugal, we can see, uh, we can already detect a huge difference from the UK reality. In Portugal, nets 
uh, the boats, field mats and trammel mats are the most important, the, the most frequently used fishing gear uh, for, uh, by the fleet uh, below 12 meters to in length. And when we compare the, the fleet below 12 meters with the fleet below 9 meters, next please, we can see that there's only one change between these fleets, is that uh, for the, the fleet below 12 meters, the first signs are replaced by drift mats. In any case, the most important information that we can extract from this, uh, this uh, previous evaluation is the uh, uh, five most important types of fishing gear used in Portugal uh, are used by 95% of the fleet. And when we talk, when we talk about the overall fleet, the 10 most important fishing gear uh, are all uh, uh, correspond virtually to the entire uh, small scale fishing. Next, please. So, this slide here uh, uh, represents, try to illustrate the, the work that we have in progress right now. After defining the small scale fishing fleet segment, after uh, establishing the most important types of fishing gear used by the, that fleet, we are now developing, of course, it's, it's still a draft work and which is under development. Uh, we are developing at the, the joint method, which is an index system to assess the impact of different fishing gear. We have divided the, the matrix into different types of pressure, physic, uh, uh, physical and chemical, biological and ecological, and also impacts caused directly by the, the fishing operation. And then we have the also different types of interaction. Uh, we have interactions with the bottom, removalization of pollutants, increased turbidity in the water column, etc. Fuel consumption, uh, noise, litter, all grouped into the physical and chemical uh, impact. Then regarding the, the biological and ecological impact, we will consider variables such as damage, uh, damage and loss of protected habitat, by catch, mortality and damage caused both, both to protected species and non-target species. Finally, regarding the, the fish itself, we will try to assess the, the importance of variables such as discard of non-commercial species, discard of target species because they were damaged or because they were below the minimum landing size, we also consider the, the phenomenon, the process of those fishing, and also the eventual occurrence of conflict with other fishing gear. For each type of fishing gear, we will classify the gear according to the intensity or proportion, the frequency and the duration of this impact. Then, after filling the, mat the matrix through uh, a calculation that we will develop uh, later on, we will have uh, the notion that caused by each type of fishing gear, depending on the type of habitat which is being operated. Next slide, please. So, as I just mentioned, uh, right now we are uh, developing the, after we have closed with the previous task, which were to define the segments of the fleet and to identify the main types of fishing gear. Now we are, uh, uh, our work in progress, the, the task that we are performing right now is to improve and make some pre-testing pre of the fishing uh, impact matrix, uh, which we are, uh, which we are, have been doing using uh, Portuguese case studies for different types of fishing gears and different types of fishing gears in order to guarantee that our that our evaluation matrix for the impact of fishing gear is more or less universal and can be used everywhere and for each type of fishing gear. Next slide, please. So moving towards the end of my presentation, uh, I will just say, uh, briefly, very briefly, explain the next step in the project. So after after we finish the, the evaluation matrix, we will ask the, the help and support from the stakeholders, from their expert judgment, score the impact, and, and rank the, the fishing years based on the expected 
impacts that they might cause in the marine ecosystem. Then we will identify and map the, the main habitats which are potentially impacted by the activity of small scale fisheries. And finally, we will put propose potential uh, mitigation measures for those impacts. Uh, just to summarize, by overlapping three, la three different layers of information, that is to say, the information that we have from the fishing impact, the information uh, that we have from the, the spatial and temporal distribution of the fishing effort, and overlapping these two layers over the, the habitat mapping, we wish to have a broader, uh, broader information and uh, specialized information on the, on the main impacts of the fishing gear used by small scale fisheries throughout the, the, the Atlantic area. Next, please. So uh, I've just finished my, my presentation. Uh, I want to thank you all for your attendance. And fin and, and finish uh, with a uh, merci beaucoup pour votre intérêt et participation dans cette uh, webinar. Merci à tous. Merci, merci Paolo. Euh... Donc, on reprendra après si vous avez des questions. Donc, je vois qu'il commence à y avoir des questions qui se posent sur l'interface QR. Donc, n'hésitez pas à continuer de poser des questions. Euh, on les reprendra donc à la suite de la deuxième présentation euh, qui va être présentée par Aransa et euh, David. Aransa euh, s'occupe du work package qui estime la valeur socio-économique des zones de pêche exploitées par les, 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 les petites pêches côtières. Et David s'occupe plus particulièrement de l'estimation du patrimoine naturel et des héritages socio-culturels des petites pêches côtières. Donc, Aranza, c'est une collègue espagnole de la Fondation Asti. Et elle est par ailleurs la coordinatrice générale du projet. Et David est un professeur associé à l'Université du Levin. Il est spécialisé dans l'estimation des valeurs sociaux, des domaines naturels et des héritages socio-culturels des secteurs. Uh, I'm David Castilla. Uh, as, as I have been introduced, I'm I'm, I'm an associate professor in the University of Huelva and research in in Memphis research team devoted to uh, applying uh, different statistical and econometric methodologies to, to fisheries analysis. Uh, I I will uh, present this uh, webinar together with Arancha Murilla. Um, uh, I would like to, to begin, uh, please, next slide, uh, with, uh, with a reflection. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, well, uh, first, the, the partners involved in, in these seminars are uh, three from Spain, as the University of Huelva and University of Huelva, United Kingdom, CEFAS, and University of San Andreas. Uh, from Ireland, we have uh, the Island Seafood uh, Development Agency. Uh, from Portugal, the University of Algarve, and um, from France, uh, we make an ICMR. Uh, next slide. Well, uh, let's begin a quote in uh, Albert Einstein. Uh, we cannot solve our problems with the same thinking we used when we created them. Uh, what I want to, to, to say with this, okay? Uh, first, uh, we have to make a reflection of why uh, we we have experiencing a long history uh, the same problems for fisheries uh, all around the world. Uh, the, so no, the, the well known projects of uh, over exploitation and rent dissipation of fisheries. Uh, I think the main reasons is because the focus we have uh, used to to manage fisheries, uh, particularly we, we we didn't consider in general in the past. Uh, the different uses involved in, in fisheries. We are not uh, only uh, talking about uh, fisheries, but we are talking about marine ecosystems and all the uses that compete in the in the case of marine ecosystems, uh, like uh, transport, uh, like uh, tourism. There are many activities competing when we are talking about the sea 
and this all activity all these activities have to be considered if we want to to approach uh, properly to the management of of, of the seas and fisheries additionally we should uh, not consider fish species commercial fish species isolated but all the species that are related to that in the whole ecosystem. Uh, this is one of the problems uh, when we approach fisheries in the past. Additionally, uh, we normally focus only on biological issues, and we forget about social and economic elements that are very important for incentives and to determine the, 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 the main preference points for the socioeconomic and biological sustainability of fisheries. And finally, uh, we generally consider only food provisioning value of fishery, uh, but we don't consider the rest of values of fisheries, like cultural variables, regulating uh, service values, and some other variables that are very important relating to, to fisheries that uh, produce a decision bias uh, in policymakers when we, they approach to solve the problems related to fisheries in the post benefit analysis. Now, uh, Arancha is going to to go deeply on this on this issue in the next slide, so, so please. Next slide. Next slide. Yes, uh, good morning to everybody. When you let us. Uh, yes, uh, we want to to identify in CAFISMA, which is the the role of smaller scale fisheries uh, under an ecosystem based approach. As uh, David is uh, saying, we need to take into account um, uh, some issues uh, that we usually don't uh, consider in management or in the management of uh, small scale fisheries. Uh, in particular, uh, CAFISMAN uh, wants to provide uh, new information uh, to better uh, develop this ecosystem approach, because as you know, uh, an ecosystem approach is a very difficult concept, very easy to say and very easy to write in a piece of paper, but uh, it's not as easy as uh, we expected uh, when we try to put in practice this uh, concept. So what we want to do is to use CAFISMAN to provide new knowledge that uh, final stakeholders uh, might use in order to advance, in order to progress in the application of an ecosystem approach uh, when uh, managing uh, small scale fisheries. So we want to take into account three considerations in this uh, webinar. The first one is that uh, we need to balance the environmental and biological uh, aspect with other as socioeconomic uh, evaluations. And in particular, this presentation deals with this kind of socioeconomic uh, variables that we also need to take into consideration together with the biological and with the other environmental aspect. The second uh, aspect that we want to take into account is the, the consideration of the economic assessment of the ecosystem services, as uh, David is uh, remarking. The, the economic assessment of the provisioning, but also the, ecos the, the, the economic assessment of the cultural and uh, other ecosystem services, other social ecosystem services. We will see later in which way we are trying to provide economic assessment of those uh, ecosystem services. And uh, finally, if we want to provide new knowledge useful in a context of an ecosystem approach uh, management, we need to consider the spatial dimension. I mean, it's not, um, it's not enough uh, when we provide economic, uh, new economic uh, information uh, once the fish is, uh, is arriving at port. We need to get knowledge on which are the areas in which the small scale fisheries are operating. So the uh, main difficulty is to provide this kind of economic assessment with a spatial resolution is an additional difficulty that we want to cover in the context of CAFISMAN. So in the next slide, uh, what um, in the next slide, I, what I want to anticipate is which uh, will be the, the kind of output that uh, we want to provide coming from CAFISMAN uh, using uh, this geo tool that uh, we will open in a couple of minutes. We will provide, of course, as in other projects, uh, some reports uh, concerning the main outputs, but uh, the, 
the, the most important is that all the information, all the new information, new that we want to, to, to produce in the context of this project, we will produce that information in a geotool that uh, will be in the future available to any of you to get the information you need depending on the final stakeholder uh, you, you are and depending on your final aim you will be able to use that new information uh, for the for the atlantic uh, area for the five countries that uh, we are covering in this project so christoph if you can open now the geo tool uh, please uh, we will show to you. Um, we will show to you. Yes, and this is the the geo tool that uh, will be available in the future. Uh, we expect to produce. Uh, in fact, uh, we are uh, producing some uh, some results while we are generating. Uh, then, because this project is a three years, a more than three years project, and uh, we will not wait until the end of the project to produce and this uh, information uh, to be available to all of you. So, as you can see, uh, we have some variables that I will explain later. As for instance, uh, the gross added value, we can click in gross added value. Uh, that I will split, uh, explain uh, uh, later, and we can uh, we can uh, uh, see which is the assessment of the gross added value for all the sub regions, the ISIS sub regions covering the five countries. Uh, but we can select, for instance, which is the gross added value only for vessels under under uh, 10, uh, 10 meters, for instance. We can um, that is we can uh, select. Uh, we can also select which is the year uh, in which we are interested to get this information about this variable, the gross added value. So we can uh, select also the year, the country, um, all the information will be disaggregated. So any of you can uh, finally select the piece of information you are interested on, the country, the vessel, the year, the and of course uh, you are um, you uh, are looking in this um, slide other variables of the uh, for example the variable cost the variable cost uh, or uh, and with the same uh, level of disaggregation, uh, the same level of information. Uh, at this moment, we have uh, the information that uh, we need to produce that gross added value uh, in terms of uh, revenues and in terms of variable costs, especially the fuel cost to, to build that, um, that variable. But we have other variables, as for instance, the total emissions of CO2 and the same happens if you click in the in the co2 emissions uh, uh, you can uh, get which is the intensity of the emissions uh, coming from this uh, uh, generation of this gross added value generation so this is a very fast idea about the geo tool of course this is not the final version we are uh, starting with the project and this is no more than some intermediate uh, uh, variables that we are generating and uh, for sure later when speaking about the cultural values uh, david will speak about the economic assessment of the cultural and natural values that we are developing in the, in the project, we will introduce those variables in the geo tool and the information coming from the previous uh, topic uh, spoken by Paulo. Uh, the same, uh, we will uh, introduce the information as soon as we are generating in the context of the project and will be available in this geo tool with other management capacities that we will explain in, in, in the future in other the webinars. So if we can back to the to the presentation uh, now, uh, we are uh, looking this kind of uh, information that uh, we can provide uh, uh, in the middle of the project. But before uh, going and explaining the ecosystem services economic assessment, I would like to show the next slide in which. Um, uh, 
uh, you can see a couple of examples in which the uh, level of resolution of the information is uh, higher. I mean, for example, this is an example for the Bay of Biscay in which we are estimate, uh, we are have uh, estimated the added value, but the higher the, with um, higher spatial resolution. So the idea is to move into the project, uh, not only to estimate the, the ecosystem services value, uh, at least for some of them uh, at uh, ICES region uh, level resolution, but uh, we expect to produce a higher level resolution assessment, economic assessment of the of the different ecosystem services. Another example, if you click again, uh, Christoph, we can uh, get uh, other example uh, again for the Bay of Biscay in which we have also the added value for um, for the uh, bus uh, small scale fisheries and we have uh, an illustration about the utility of this information in the future because if uh, we cross this information with the expected marine protected areas in the in the in the in the bus coast we can see which is the relevance importance in economic terms of uh, the small scale fisheries in the same area in which uh, uh, it's possible to put uh, protected areas in the future. So, in a marine spatial uh, planning context and framework, is a very useful information. And if we move to the following slide, we can get another example coming from uh, the north of Edinburgh, in which we have also a high resolution data. In this case, uh, I have introduced the number of uh, vessels. So the idea is to map the whole Atlantic area with the best uh, data. Uh, the project has a specific work package of the work package for led by Stanis and Muerza, which uh, is covering uh, this topic about the higher resolution data. So we will not cover this topic in this particular uh, uh, webinar. If we move now just to the following slide, David will so do another, uh, another tool that we will use in the project. Thank you, Rancha. Uh, we are we are also uh, working in a in another intermediate tool in the framework of of Catfishman uh, project. Uh, in the in action one, we we were devoted to to make a a, a reference documents uh, search related to natural and cultural heritage in the Atlantic area. Uh, we have uh, introduced all these elements. We have. Uh, found uh, the different partners in the, involved in the project in different areas, uh, including in the Atlantic area, in a, that, in a reference manager called Mendeley that will be uh, prepared to, 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 for, for, for all researchers to have public access to, the, to this reference search in the, in the area so that we can, we can access to the different uh, elements that have been identified in the framework of the project related to natural and cultural heritage of the uh, fisheries uh, in the Atlantic area uh, by means of different uh, classification and categories of, uh, of uh, natural and cultural heritage. So uh, this will be one of the outputs of the project, one of the tools that will be available publicly uh, in the internet, uh, accessing by, uh, through Mendeley. Uh, so that uh, any researcher or policymaker or a stakeholder involved in the in the in the decisions related uh, to fisheries can access to the information related to what are the elements uh, related to fisheries in terms of cultural and natural heritage in the in the fisheries. So this is another tool we are producing in the framework of the project that uh, we we for sure think that will be certainly important for for the rest of 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 the of the scientific and and, and, and all the stakeholders in the coastal community. So, so next slide, please, so that Arancha will continue with the focus on, on some other issues related to the analysis of data of working back as seven. Yes, uh, once we have uh, presented uh, which is the kind of uh, way of using the final information, because for us it's very important to share with you that uh, the output of the project will be available and uh, you will be able to get the information, to get the output, to get the new information coming from 
uh, a large number of new variables uh, that uh, we are, uh, for which we are producing the, the, the assessment. So now uh, I want to start showing you in which way or how we are building those variables, at least uh, the variables for which we have some information at this moment uh, in the project, and uh, later David will continue with other variables. Uh, even if we are saying that it's important to get, uh, in addition to the provision ecosystem service, other ecosystem services economic assessment, it is also important to speak about the provision ecosystem service, and we need to provide the economic uh, assessment of the provision incoming from the small scale fisheries working in that Atlantic area, and the, inf the economic information about the value uh, of the provision in ecosystem services will be done with uh, spatial resolution, as I have already commented, and you have already seen very fast some previous uh, results for the uh, different ICs subregions. So the um, uh, variable that we have chosen to uh, assess and to provide economic assessment of the provision in ecosystem services in the Atlantic area is the added value. As uh, you know, the added value is the business indicator in contrast to a price approach in which we only take into account the revenues. We need and it's uh, better if we use the added value because we are introducing also the variable cost, the variable cost that the small scale fisheries need to produce that uh, that uh, ecosystem service. So as a result of the added value uh, uh, assessment, we have on the top uh, left uh, a first figure in which you can see in gray, which is the added value for the different subregions, for the different IC subregions. Uh, there are four regions uh, on the top left, uh, which are the 9A, 8A, uh, 7E, and 7D, for which uh, and the added value is the highest. Uh, those uh, four areas are uh, the most important when speaking in terms of the contribution to the added value, but in uh, any case, it's very important to see the inequalities when generating the added value uh, across the Atlantic area, and it is important not only to put emphasis on the, on the four areas which are the most uh, important when creating the added value, but also in those areas in which the added value is lower. And uh, you can see also, uh, for a purpose of simplicity, uh, we can not show all the results, but uh, of course we can see and we can uh, uh, and we can analyze which is the contribution depending on the vessel lines, depending on the fishing technology, the country. Uh, so we can uh, produce uh, several results that will be available in the geo tool. And on the top right, you can find another figure which is very important because it represents different uh, variable costs. It's not uh, very relevant which one is its line, but I want to show to you the way in which uh, they are growing according to the different ISIS areas. On the top right, we uh, are representing the, those areas in which the amount of uh, uh, fees is higher and the landings coming from those areas is uh, higher. And so you can see that the, the way in which the variable costs are growing is higher and higher. And uh, we check, uh, uh, analyzing the data, some uh, these economies of scale. And this is very important because on the one hand, we are generating uh, a lot of added value in some regions, but also uh, we observe some uh, economic inefficiencies when producing that gross added value. And the implication of this is very important, the implication of the, uh, of the lack of uh, economic efficiency, because if we move to the following slide, what we are also able to, uh, if we next slide, please. If we go to the to, to this slide, we can see which is the carbon footprint, which is close linked to the variable cost, in particular to the fuel cost that we need to produce at added value, and we see which is exactly. Uh, for each of the regions, again, which is the amount of CO2 emissions, which is the carbon footprint, and which is the global impact, uh, 
which uh, is coming from this activity when uh, producing the provision in ecosystem service. So we have to put in the balance those areas with high gross added value, but also high global impact with those ICS areas in which we see that the gross added value is high, but the global impact is lower. So it's important to to, to check what is happening in the Atlantic area, because we need to put together the provisioning activity itself, which is the most relevant in terms of the small scale fishes, but what is happening with the other ecosystem services. We can compare what uh, is happening in other, um, in other areas in the world and what is happening in the literature, but we see that the, the increase uh, around a 3% in the in five years is a very important increase not to consider at all in an ecosystem-based approach. So uh, in next slide, uh, David will continue speaking about how we want to consider the, the rest of the ecosystem services. <laughs> uh, one of the, the, the things we have done in, in Catfishman project is just to make a, a first approach to natural and cultural heritage because we need to know what we are evaluating to evaluate that. So, so this is the first exercise we have done in the framework of Action 1 of Working Pack Act 6. And the first thing we did is just to characterize what we consider, what we are going to consider as natural and uh, cultural heritage. The first, uh, the natural heritage uh, involves uh, natural features consisting of physical and biological formations that are of outstanding universal power in terms of aesthetic or scientific point of view, uh, some other geological or Physiographical formations that are also important in the point of view of science and conservation, or natural seeds that are uh, precisely delineated in natural area of outstanding universal value for the point of view of science. In the, the concept of, of fisheries, of small scale fisheries, the, the criteria we have followed in terms of analyzing what we consider uh, natural seeds that are relevant for small scale fisheries are mainly ecological and biological process. And, and the species and biodiversity of these natural seeds. As you can see here in the pictures, there are three examples of these uh, elements of uh, natural heritage, uh, specifically in the, in, the, in the left corner, in the left up corner, we have the Picard Stuarins and Opal Sea Marine Natural Park in France, which is a natural heritage element that is located in past place, involved from Involving an area of 2,342 square kilometers of sea and estuarine areas in 2012, it's recognized as natural uh, seed. Uh, and this uh, marine protected area is a very relevant ecosystem next to one of the most important fishing ports in France, uh, Paul Olson Mer. And this area constitutes a, a natural area of outstanding universal value in terms of ecological and biological process, a support and important marine ecosystem in North Sea and Mancha Channel generating an important socio-economic activity. Uh, also, uh, uh, another other examples like the Chelsea and Fleet Lagoon Marine Protected Area in the United Kingdom, or uh, as you can see, uh, also the, in, the, in the corner, in the down corner on the right, the fish nursery grounds of the coast of Huelva in the, the Gulf of Cali, uh, which is locally known as the wedge soul and crown nursery grounds, uh, which are protected since 1966. And the adjacent uh, and all overlying research of most of what TV River, the self reserve of the coast of uh, the province of Huelva, the Marismas, uh, the Rio Piedras and Fletcher Rompino Natural Seed and Marismas Aludir Natural Seed, which constitute a, a very important area, a support of the ecosystem of the Gulf of Cali, generating also a very important socioeconomic activity there. These are examples of natural heritage. Now, in the next slide, uh, we, are try we are going to try to characterize. Uh, the, the elements of cultural heritage, and then we are going to introduce uh, how we are going to approach to, to value it in the, in the, the contents of the project. So, please, next slide, uh, Christopher. Uh, uh, as you can see here, uh, we, we can distinguish between, uh, in between uh, uh, tangible cultural heritage and intangible cultural heritage. Uh, 
And we will talk about tangible culture as it is. We are talking about monument, group of monuments, or even mobile elements uh, like paintings related to uh, the, the, what we are analyzing in this particular case, which is fisheries. As you can see here on the left, we have up left, we have a couple of samples. And let's say, for instance, the Waimot historic uh, uh, fish market. Uh, also, we have there the, the Nueva Umbria tuna trappers installation and building. Uh, it's called the Real de la Almadraba de Nueva Umbria, which is uh, located in the Gulf of Cadiz. And, and uh, this uh, group of buildings are the, the kinds of uh, for a storehouse of, for fishing gears and house of sailors and workers in the tuna trappers located in the in the Gulf of Cadiz, particularly in the in the area of of Lepe and Cartaya. Uh, it was recognized by Andalusia Regional Governor Cultural Interest Group uh, in the category of phenological interest since 2015. And this group of buildings constitute a cultural heritage element very important as an example of architectural land structure of tuna traps and the settlements of works and sailors linked to, uh, to them along the Mediterranean and Gulf of uh, Cadiz in the Atlantic coast. Another, some other examples of this natural heritage, particularly in France, would be, for instance, the lighthouse of the island of Wasan, or, uh, uh, located in the Atlantic coast of France, that involves uh, five lighthouses that uh, uh, have a very important uh, element in terms of architecture and, and, and have a lot, additionally a very important historical value that have served as navigation help in, in the area for, for a long time for fisheries uh, issues and also for maritime transport and commerce. Uh, there are some other uh, uh, kind of uh, cultural heritage. It is the intangible cultural heritage. Intangible cultural heritage and the, the practice, uh, the representation, expression, knowledge, uh, the capacities of communities, group, or even individuals that are recognized as part of the cultural heritage. There are different categories of this intangible cultural heritage. There are uh, uh, oral expressions and, and traditions. Uh, we have here a history in the case of the United Kingdom, this is the history of the snack, snack with a uh, monster. Uh, which is in, in Father Craft, and here is Brighton, the, the story that is traditional in the area, in one of the areas in the United Kingdom. We have also a festive event rituals and social practice, like the Capreton Festival of the Sea. You know, this is an example uh, in the category of, of, of this event festival uh, in the, for marine issues in the, in the area. Uh, that takes place during the weekend at the beginning of the fishing season, and and there is a small scale fishes in that area of 19 boats that are honorable and blessed in a religious ceremony. Uh, since 1960, the sailors and, and the fishermen that go to fish at the beginning of the season. So this is uh, an example of these festive events associated to fishing that generate value in terms in this particular case of tourism. Uh, there are also some, some other elements uh, related to uh, knowledge and practice related to the nature and the universe. Uh, here we have uh, uh, the stone uh, tidal fishing wares. Uh, this feature is uh, of Chipiona, uh, stone tidal fishing wares, but there are also examples in the, in the case of France. This is, uh, the, there are uh, some of them in the, in the Oleron Island. Uh, these stone fishing tidal wares uh, are examples of traditional craftsmanship and also uh, knowledge practice, knowledge, uh, uh, practice concerning nature of the university because they are based on the knowledge of how tides work in the Atlantic uh, and also what's the behavior of fish. And uh, it's additionally an, an element of tangible cultural heritage because there are also uh, uh, archaeological uh, seas of stone walls uh, uh, in the Atlantic coast, particularly uh, there are some of the elements in the area of Finisterre in, in France but also an element of, the, of tangible cultural heritage. They are uh, very important in terms of the value for logistical and for cultural issues in the area. So, so it's important to put them in value and put a value to these elements so that we can, we can, we can, we can avoid the bias that produce only considering the food provision in value of fisheries instead of all these elements of cultural values and some other values related to fishing. There are some other elements related to this uh, knowledge and practice related to natural universities. Let's say, for example, the clay pot uh, fishing gear of the Gulf of Cadita, that is uh, 
the local in called uh, Al Katruf uh, that comes from the Arab Al Katruf. Uh, uh, this is uh, uh, the switching gear consists of uh, a clay for rigged uh, to long lines and it's character to be very selective given that it only target octopus uh, whose side is closely related to the size of the of the of the octopus and, and is based on the knowledge of fishermen uh, that the octopus is uh, looking for shirting uh, to for protection and to, to to a place to hide in the bottom in the bottom of the sea there are some some other examples of uh, uh, let's say uh, performing arts, uh, which is another category from tangible cultural heritage. Uh, let's say, for example, the, the ronqueo of the tuna. Uh, in the particular case of the of the, the Gulf of Cadiz, there is a, a municipality called Isla Cristina that organizes annually the tuna cutting, locally called ronqueo, uh, in in a traditional way. So the tuna uh, uh, cutting takes place in uh, in, a, in a square called La Madrava in this village, uh, uh, where the, the tuna trap of Las Cabezas were located until uh, 1967. And this uh, local name of the tuna cutting uh, comes from the Spanish roncar, which means snoring, uh, which is very similar to the noise that the night produced uh, while chased against the spin bone of the tuna. So the professional uh, in, in, in charge of the ronqueo is called ronqueador, cut. Uh, and take out the entrails and butchering of the different step until finishing in a in a performance where there is public uh, to this, uh, many tourists and people of the area go there to see the uh, this activity and after that they eat the tuna in different uh, preparations. So this is a, a performance related to fisheries that produce a value that need to be evaluated in terms uh, of considering the importance of small scale fisheries in the area. And finally. Another example of this intangible cultural history and traditional craftsmanship. This is the additional uh, uh, fishing gears or or traditional fishing gear. In this particular case, we, we include here a picture of, of the of the tuna trap of of, 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 of Barbate in, in Spain. Uh, so please, next slide. Next slide, Christopher, please. Well, uh, now it's time, once we, we have identified these uh, elements of natural and cultural heritage in the particular case of the, of the Alanti area, uh, now we, we, we are involved in the second step in the, in the framework of uh, the Fishman project. We are, we are first identifying the, the, the geographical location of all these natural heritage in terms of including them in the, the contents of the, the geo tool uh, that has Arancha presented to you. And additionally, we want to include the values of this uh, uh, cultural heritage element. This is a very complex issue. We are involved uh, in action number two, working back at six now. And what we try to, to get at the end of this is what we call a total economic value of, of fisheries. Uh, this total economic value, as you may know, is divided into parts, the use values and the non-use value. Uh, the first one is the, is, is, is is coming from the, the use of a natural resource, and the second one is coming just uh, from the value of the natural resource, just because as, uh, it's, a, it's existence and the legacy value of it. Uh, the, the use value is divided in uh, four kinds of value. The direct value is come from a split market. The indirect value that uh, is coming from something that is marketed, but in an explicit uh, market related to particularly to that natural resource, it's coming from another uh, uh, connected market to that. Uh, the option value that comes from the potential value that the, uh, this natural resource can have uh, in the future, and the quasi-option value that uh, comes from the respective value from the preservation of natural resource and have uh, uh, improved knowledge of it uh, to can get more value in the future. There are also, as I told you, the, the non-use value that comes from uh, existence value, which is the existence, the value that comes from the mere existence of a natural uh, resource, and the legacy value, which is the, the value of the natural resource for, for preserving it for the future generations. So one of the tasks of this project that is coming now during the next year will be uh, to, to provide a tool to, to, to get uh, uh, this uh, value of natural cultural heritage uh, that is standardized uh, with the slides uh, 
uh, adjustment depending on the on the area, knowing what is available in terms of natural and cultural heritage in the in the Atlantic area, uh, so that we can put values uh, to these elements in the in the geo tool uh, we are preparing in the framework of the project. Uh, there are different techniques for evaluating that. Uh, we have the market-based techniques that uh, just are the common techniques used just to, to evaluate provisioning values or some other touristic uh, uses related to fisheries. But there are some other techniques that are non-based in markets uh, when we don't have markets to, to know what's the value. This is the case of uh, uh, different methods the, the, the travel costs, hedonic prices, or uh, some of the methods that contingent valuation that are uh, one of the most uh, the most important in these terms and probably one of the ones uh, together with uh, some other options that we will use in the in the framework of the project to evaluate that. Uh, just uh, making an effort to standardize and simplify, simplify so that we can have uh, uh, a value of the whole Atlantic area uh, just compromising a little bit the, uh, to have very exact information on the on the issue because of the the necessity of a standardization to get a, a a value for the whole area. So please, next slide. There are uh, some next slide, please. There are some preliminary results of, that we got from the analysis of the database uh, we we produce in the framework of the project. Uh, these are preliminary results. We are including, uh, continue, we continue including information in the database and probably by the beginning of September, we will have an update on this on this information. And as you can see here, what we have is uh, by now uh, almost 1,000 entries in the database. Uh, they are by now geographically classified in NUT2, but we have also uh, classified some elements at NUT3 level. And the, <coughs> sorry, and we are using different methodologies to analyze this database in order to find patterns that allow us uh, to build, uh, to to prepare the tools, the standardized tool we the standardized tool we are going to to use to to, to 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 evaluate to assess the value of these cultural and natural elements uh, heritage in the in the case of a uh, small scale fisheries in the Atlantic, a uh, particular in table uh, one. Uh, we can see uh, that we have built five different uh, uh, groups uh, of 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 uh, the of, of elements in the in the framework of the Atlantic Arc. Particularly, group one involves 166 entries of the database related to <coughs> to a festive event, rituals, and social practice, um, gastronomy, and food. Uh, this uh, group involves only elements of intangible cultural heritage. We have also a second group that involves more than 400 entries of the database that include traditional craftsmanship, uh, uh, knowledge and practice related to natural uh, and the universe, the natural and the universe, and additionally, uh, some other uh, forms of, of collective socialization and organization in the framework. That it is also in, only involves intangible cultural elements. There is a, a third group involving um, around 200 of entries of the database that uh, related to tangible cultural heritage and traditional craftsmanship in, that include uh, also bot building, uh, cheap writing, networks, and or fishing gears, uh, description, among others. Uh, there is uh, another group, the group number four, that involves uh, around 70 entries in the database related to to tradition and an oral expression, uh, uh, some other uh, specific use on, on the on the natural landscape, uh, and and some other uh, uh, e festive events and, and, and rituals, some social practice uh, related to intangible cultural heritage and blue fight that also involves uh, around 30 entries that are mainly related to natural heritage and use of natural. Uh, landscape and, and knowledge related to this uh, natural landscape. Uh, in the second table on the on the right, we can we can also find uh, the, the relation of this group related to the different countries. These are traditional results that probably will change a little bit uh, from now to to September. Uh, as you can see here, uh, the most important group is group number two. Uh, uh, is it lucky? Is because it is related to to extractive activities. Uh, and additionally, uh, it's also related to the 
food provision service of the, of the ecosystems, uh, of the artisanal small scale fish, uh, fleet. Uh, the, 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 the less important uh, group uh, is group number uh, three, and that is followed by um, by, by, by some other group, the group number four, uh, which different importance depending on the country or group number three, which is very relevant in Spain and Ireland. Uh, while group uh, one is very relevant in Portugal and Spain. So uh, using all this information, this is a sample of one of the results we are getting, uh, including several factors identified that summarize the importance of the different elements of culture and natural heritage in the, in the framework of the, the, in the, in the context of the Atlantic area of Europe. We we are trying to find the patterns necessary to, to, to prepare a world tour to analyze the, to assess the value of these elements in the case of Africa. Uh, so this is what we I wanted to, to say related to this. So uh, this next slide. Um, thank you very much for your attention. Uh, I I will be happy to go through all the questions you 